check out our big, beautiful beach house we got here. It's, well, it's not big, but it is beautiful. And I got a couple things I want to talk to you guys about today. Well, we're going to go back to the house in a little bit. We just came down to the beach for a little bit of respite from the brightness and heat of the inland area. But I want to show you guys in more detail the clutch we hatched out recently. And ow! Something's biting my toe. And there's also this article that my buddy Phil blew past my way recently. It's about uh, ball pythons and something about them suffering in captivity. And it seems like propaganda to me. Now, I may not be the right person to speak about this because I'm so emotionally invested in keeping snakes and have been for a long time and very much tied to the pet industry. So, uh, but I'm still gonna go over it and kind of give you guys my thoughts on this article that I think is very, very propaganda driven, though there is some factual basis to some of it, which there would have to be for it to take any kind of hold at all as a, as a piece. I'm still gonna go over my thoughts about it all in a little bit, but first uh, I'm just gonna hang out at the beach and check out the other snakes and, hey T, can I ask you something please? Yeah! What do you know? Do you know feather? Do you know anything about feathers? What do you know about feathers? Elephant. You found it in the sand? Yeah. What else about feathers? Feathers alive? Feathers not alive. Nothing. <laughs> she knows nothing about feathers. That's okay. Well, at least she can admit it. What do you know? What you hunting for, mommy? Sea glass. What do you know? Sea glass. Oh, what about sea glass? Um, that we are finding a bunch right here in Moonstone Beach, and sea glass is glass that gets mixed around by the waves and hit by pebbles and sand. And a lot of times it's really frosted and it it starts out as normal glass. And that's all I know. Is this sea glass? I don't think so. I think that other one is though. Yeah, the other one is definitely. Can I see it? Yeah, that one's definitely sea glass. Did you know there's a whole beach out there that is nothing but sea glass? Are you kidding? No, I don't think so. Starting screen recording, right? Three, two, one, recording. Okay, let's find the article. Okay, let's look at this article. First off, right off the bat, I mean, looking to buy a pet snake, a life in captivity is a life of suffering. So obviously this article is very biased against keeping snakes in captivity. You don't need to read any further into this to know that that's gonna be the point they're trying to drive home. And then the little button right here to learn why they suffer. And I would, I'm gonna put a link down in the description for this article for you guys. I would love if you guys go check this article out and then leave some comments down in the uh, comment section there and let me know what you think about this article. Think about its validity and it says that keeping snakes is inherently cruel, difficult, and potentially dangerous. Now, the inherently cruel part I have a problem with, of course, uh, difficult, sure. Potentially dangerous, depends on the species. They've chosen to target ball pythons in this in particular, which trying to keep people from keeping ball pythons at this point is to me kind of like trying to get rid of all the cars on the road or I don't know trying to end gun ownership in America when there's already as many guns as people it's just it's just like too late now some other points they're bringing up here are emotional and physical trauma and basic needs not met now to just it is important for us as other keepers to educate other keepers on proper keeping techniques so that they aren't suffering in captivity yeah they bring up uh, Snakes getting burned on heat pads. Yes, that can happen. You gotta educate people on how to prevent those types of things from happening. And then they have some points about emotional and physical trauma and also that snakes don't like to be touched. And I do believe that if you give anything enough love, then eventually it will respond in kind, even if it's an inanimate object. That's obviously not based in science or fact. But if you wanna talk science and fact, 
then the reptile brain doesn't necessarily have the space for emotional or th the ability to like or not like something. So, and they say here, snakes suffer in your home. Despite good intentions, a snake can never have its needs entirely met when kept as an exotic pet. I would say that's not accurate either. I mean, they can ha have their needs met and maybe even exceeded, you know, not having to worry about predators. It's, and, and they bring up this point about cats and dogs. Sorry, there's yelling in the background. <laughs> At the summary of their article, they're talking about if you still want a pet, you can get a cat or dog because they're domesticated. So these guys aren't hardcore animal rights guys, obviously, because I know the hardcore ones like end all human interaction with animals completely. So they're not that hard. They're still recommending pets, but just cats or dogs because they've been domesticated with humans over thousands of years. Now, I'd say dogs, definitely we've successfully domesticated cats. You can keep in the house, but as soon as you let that cat out, I don't know, it's just like... <laughs> that that one that one's a little bit iffy for me. But ball pythons are just... seem to be a horrible... They're using them because they're a popular kept pet, I think. And they're the closest thing to a domesticated snake probably ever. Like, they've been interacting with people for centuries, you know. that They get their name Royal Python from the African royalty wearing them as jewelry because they're so docile and so easygoing with humans that that's where they got their name from. So anyway, uh, that's kind of my little thoughts and I could go on and on about this article and dive deeper into it, but since right off the bat, it's just clearly a piece about trying to, you know, life in captivity is a life of suffering. That's all I need to read right there. And they do have some valid points in the article as any article should, but again, uh, the link's down there in the description. I'd love for you guys to go check it out and let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments down below. Thanks, let's go check out my ball pythons. Yeah, complaining corner, that was it basically. I wasn't in a corner, but I haven't had much complaint about lately until I saw that uh, that article. Now I showed you guys these snakes before. They had just barely crawled out of the egg when I showed them to you, so they hadn't shed yet, but now they've all had their nice first shed, so we're gonna show them off. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I think they are. Am I right or not? Not entirely sure, but I'm gonna show them to you anyway and give you my best. The pairing was a coral glow pied 100% het clown to a Enchi firefly clown, which is Enchi pastel fire clown. So all the babies, worst case scenario, we we're going to get double hets pied clown. We didn't get any normals that are double hets. We did get a couple that are non-visual clowns that are double het clown pied. Starting with this guy right here, who I believe is an Enchi fire coral glow. Now the coral glow, obviously is obvious being those yellow and purple colors going on and then that head stamp is what clues me into the fire also the enchi that it was the the patterning and it was slightly darker than normal coral glows with the, the patterning but then lightened up again with the fire and just a beautiful looking snake no doubt about that i mean it's kind of hard pressed to find a snake around here that's not beautiful so it's like it is what it is but Check that out, man. Look at that head stamp. The head stamp is probably the prominent feature about this guy right here. Maybe the feature that stands out the most and what makes him the most beautiful, I think. But he does have this nice blushing coming up in his back and up the sides. You can see in between the alien heads that, that white blushing stuff coming up there. Just a beautiful, beautiful snake. Look at that. And to be double head clown pied, I mean, pff, this is my favorite part of him right here. That little section of his body from both sides too. Top, bottom, side. So here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this with every snake. I'm gonna go go on his right side and show you the pattern all the way along the right side of his body. Do, 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 Here comes the pattern. Do, 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 do. And then we'll turn him around and we'll let the left side of his body run through just so you can get a good look at it. And I know people like to see close detail, all the pattern of the snake. I mean, I'm one of them. And coming through with the left side. Dude, see this side's got some wackiness to it for sure. Doesn't look at that. See, that part right there in particular is just my, my favorite part of them. It just looks so wild. Now here we got the only other non-visual clown. So another double hit. And I believe this is an Enchi Firefly. Now the firefly, well the pastel is obvious, it's very bright yellow, and then when you add fire to that, it really makes the contrast higher and brings the dark blacks back into it like it like it has right there. And then the head stamp and the eye stripes are kind of what make me think about Anchi, but also just kind of a lot of the banding happening towards the back end of the snake here. 
the bandit going across the top. I mean, that just screams Enchi Firefly to me. If somebody thinks that I may be wrong, please leave a comment down below because again, I'm not like 100% on these, but I'm pretty certain. And then you can see that the pie tracking on the belly, especially down towards the tail. Double head clown pied. Ugh, you never get tired of double head clown pied snakes. And you'll see in these next snakes, the pied is really bringing back some pattern that I think wouldn't be there if there wasn't head pied on the visual clowns. Got the nice blush spot right there on the side. And then there's some really nice blushing in the top of the snake as well. And I believe that's from that Enchi as well. But let, let's look at that head stamp one more time. Beautiful, beautiful head stamp. Beautiful snake. Just a winner. Oh man, look at that guy. This girl is amazing. Now the rest of these snakes are visual clowns and they are all female. In fact, everything except for the Coral Glow boy was, they're all female. And this guy, you know, when I, he was the first one to, uh, this guy, this girl, she was the first one to pop her head out of the egg. And just from that head stamp, I thought, that's interesting. Maybe like some kind of enchi thing going on there or something, but I, I'm, and then the way the eyes are too, like look at the, look at the side of the face here and look at how the, eye is exposed like that it's just that, that kind of looks enchi but that's kind of it and well also the little spots on the side there's some of these spots that are kind of soft like nice circular holes that make me think enchi as well but if you've seen other enchi clowns here take a look at this this is an enchi clown 100 percent het pie that we produced last year and like most enchi clowns you can see there's like no pattern on the sides the alien's heads have no eyes there's no keyholes none of that just completely clean on the sides and then, but that head stamp is similar to what you're seeing on the snake that I just pulled out. If you look at the eyes there, it kind of gives you a look at like what I'm seeing on this other snake. So I don't know. I mean, I have been trying to produce clowns that have heavy patterning. And this is where I'm thinking the pied is bringing back in some of the pattern like it does with Enchi. But I don't know. It doesn't really matter what I think about this because I'm not going to, I'm going to keep this snake here and, and prove her out as Enchi or not. But I'd love some comments down below as to whether you think there's Enchi in this snake. I, I mean, I, I never claim to be an expert at identifying ball python genetics, but if, if I can't tell it 100%, then I'll just keep it, prove it out and, and go from there. But it just doesn't, I mean, maybe it's just a high pattern clown. And I don't know though. I don't know. I'm, I'm really kind of struggling with this one. And here we go again. Another clown female and this one when she first stuck her head out i was thinking oh yeah it's a it's a fire but then when she came all the way out and shed a little bit i was like maybe not and now that i'm looking at her on the on the monitor on the camera it's, I'm, I'm seeing the fire more clearly now but but the lack the, the crazy amount of pattern and the head just isn't like quite as orange as i would think for a fire clown and this just might be a really really good looking straight up clown that has some nice het pied influence happening with her i really i, I can't say 100 percent. i mean i i don't want to do the wishful thinking thing and then be like oh there's 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 fire in there and just like manifest fire in my brain and it not actually be there but it's just when i look at the head i just i saw fire clown but i i keep second guessing myself so i mean big problem she's a female i'm just gonna keep her and we'll we'll see what happens so I'm not complaining there either. She's just gonna stay here and I'll, I'll prove out whether she has fire or not. But again, comments in the comment section would be appreciated on this. Last but absolutely not least is the Firefly Clown, which is Pastel Fire Clown, 100% Het Pied. This girl just has some screaming, smoking pattern. Her pattern is super busy on the sides. Look at this. I just love firefly clowns, man. They're so beautiful. And the blushing on her back, look at that. That blushing is phenomenal. And then look at the other side of her body. This is the left side of her body. It's even more busy on the pattern. Look at that. Crazy amounts of alien heads just running together. And look at the contrast around the alien heads. The black and the blushing coming up in the flames. Just, oh man, it's such a good looking snake right there. And that firefly clown head stamp. Mmm, mmm. My goodness, oh, I just, I love that. So beautiful. As beautiful as she is, since I'm planning on keeping the other two female clowns back, I, I think she's gonna be the girl that I end up letting go just cause I know that she's a firefly clown and I can say that with 100% certainty. But yeah, that's the clutch guys. We have another clutch that actually hatched and then 
if you watched that video on Saturday, I was, st I was still laughing about that one, man. But so season's not over for us yet. Definitely a slower season for us over here, but I'm not complaining whatsoever, man. It's been real good. And I hope you guys are having a great day yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you on Wednesday. Oh, I you thought this was going to be, uh, you guys are like, where's the music Monday? All that music playing while we're showing these snakes off. That's me on the piano. So there you go. Aloha.